Did exactly. you, is there something else you wanted to mention about your course, Thor? Now's your oh, chance. Oh, what, what was I going to say about the course? Well, I mean, you know, the reality is, is, is uh, we're probably in our audience. There's probably some guys that are a little bit older in their late thirties. Maybe even there's some guys out there that are married and things are starting to become compromised. Really, there's a large portion of the course that would work to correcting that relationship and, and, and putting you on the path to fix it. You know, uh, I wouldn't be so arrogant to say once you've split and you're in the process of a divorce that this is going to help. However, there's always uh, an exception to the rule. And I know at least one that that did happen with using these principles. Um, it will improve your relationship no matter what, because you will be very aware of how a, a, a woman's emotions operate within the confines of a long-term relationship. I'm going to talk about what happens in a long-term relationship after the honeymoon, when the drugs in your brain wear off. That's why the analysis that I do is so important because it's going to discuss everyday behaviors that people do. You're looking for contempt. You're looking for argumentativeness. You're looking for public displays of disgust in the relationship. These are all indicators that you need to do something to become attractive. You're losing your attractive. She can still have genuine desire for you. One of the biggest indicators, you start having a dead bedroom. I got a headache. I got a headache. Guys. No, not tonight. I'm tired. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you the hard, cold truth. Yeah, she's on her period. She might need a day or two off. But other than that, it's really not a problem. Uh, if she's all about you, she'll figure it out. There's ways to do it. So how do you get her to the point where she's all about you? That's what this course is about. So you get through the brain chemistry. You're observing the behaviors. You need to be aware of some things, particularly if you've entered into a marriage. Realize that the divorce statistics show that about at, at, at three years, and it makes scientific sense, at about three to four years, there is an increase in divorce and separation. Yes, absolutely. Think about it. The brain chemistry wears off. Now you see her warts and smell her farts and vice versa for you. The kid's already here. He's just weaned off. Now it's time to find some new DNA. You know, her friends are out there still partying. She's got FOMO. She's got the media pushing her with divorce porn every day. Now there's also one that many people are familiar with. It's the seven to eight year spike. And then there's two smaller spikes after that. There's the 14 to 19 and there's a small one right around uh, 23 to 25. And then after 25 years, it drops around 20% for divorce. So, you know, you're starting to figure, you can see that if you're lasting that long, you're kind of figuring shit out. Um, so when, when the chips are down and she's not giving you sex and there's contempt in her voice, you're going to have to do things for yourself. You're going to have to start an action plan. that's going to last you at least 10 months, if not a year to correct what you have become unattractive with. You know, you're going to need to fix your physicality. You're going to need to fix your finances. You're going to need to fix your mentality. You're going to need to understand that she's going to throw the two forms of shit test at you, a compliance test and a comfort test and how to deal with both of them. They are very different when they're combined together. You've got a huge problem because she's going to throw a fit about frame. Then she's going to break down and cry all trying to get her way. It's a tantrum. You'll see it in these relationships. Uh, so you need to know how to handle it. You need to be that rock. And you are going to lead. Now, here's what it's leading up to. It's all overt. You're doing, or covert. It's all secret. You're all just handling it. Now, after you get to a certain point, if she's not making improvement, and I'm telling you about 80% of the time, she's going to make improvement in your relationship. If she does not, then you start the overt portion. And the overt portion is, look, if you're not getting along with me and you're not having sex with me, there's other women that will. Yep. And that will fix the the, the, the other 19%. Now, uh, once you've accomplished that, things are well. You reestablish your frame. You reestablish the game. And you maintain it. You drop it back into the covert arena. And you make sure you're having that good sex because that's the glue that keeps the chemistry going. Now, you might need to get that newness again. Many techniques. I spend at least three hours on the different techniques you can use to establish the newness. Part of it's the dirty talk. Part of it is how to command a little bit of techniques from BDSM I bring in so that you're controlling. Ah, I don't want to say controlling. You're commanding the relationship. You're leading it. Now, you're not a, you're not a, um, 
you're not a ruthless tyrant. No, not of course not. But what you are is a magnanimous leader. So I demonstrate how to do that. And then finally, on the fifth day, we're going to discuss alternative lifestyles, which, you know, given your um, religious background, some of it, we're going to talk about multiple marriage. We're going to talk about uh, uh, polygamy. We're going to talk about non-monogamous types of relationships and uh, how those can work in a long-term situation, which the pitfalls you have to be aware, aware of. There's quite a few warnings. Most people can't handle it. However, there is a rise in modern women that want to have relationships like this. So you need to be aware of those pitfalls. So we're going to talk all about that so that you're fully armed. And then when you're done with the course, you're going to have that analysis you can keep with you and refer to as you hit those rough spots. And it's going to guide you right back to the, the work that you're going to have to do to lead that relationship. So that's kind of what I'm putting out there. Uh, the course is going to be open for enrollment. You can pre-order now. And you can pre-order using the link you have, but uh, you won't be charged until June 28th. That'll be open for five days. And then the course is going to start July 5th at 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Two hours of lecture. Uh, we're going to have at least one or two guests and then an hour of Q&A beyond that. Uh, there's also going to be course materials given to you. It's going to be almost 200 pages of slides and references that you can refer to with research materials. So it's a little more comprehensive than just a long-term uh, relationship training course. We're also going to be talking about how to maintain that uh, masculine dominant presence throughout your relationship. That goes a long way to maintaining attractiveness levels. So basically, we're going to remodel you, and you're going to get a better relationship out of it. You'll get the girlfriend of your dreams, and you'll learn how to keep her forever. I like it. <laughs> Very comprehensive from what I'm hearing here that it's like, yeah, this isn't just something you're going to go through in a day, guys. This, is, this isn't a light read. This isn't a, oh, hey, you know, I, I, I bought, you know, so-and-so's book or course and, and I, I steamrolled my way through it in under 24 hours. Yeah. I It'll know be 10 hours minimum and we'll probably be going three hours a day. It'll be five days long. So... Well, and I know from uh, Thor gave me a little preview, a little taste. And when I started looking at it, I was like, holy shit. This this isn't just like I took, I took a minute to put it together. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't normally, you know, endorse or recommend things unless I've either tried it out or I've at least been able to sample it and and kind of draw my own conclusions. Uh, because that's, uh, I'm not about, you know, making the money. It's, I'm not here to hustle. And, and I look at it and I'm like, wow, Thor's done his homework. Okay. It's very comprehensive guys. There's things in there that go way deep. And, and there's even, you know, even me being the, the consummate bachelor, being the guy that, yeah, where I, I know for me, I don't want kids because I don't have kids and I'm almost 50. And so I don't want to be a dad. I'm okay with that. That is my decision. But I, I get tired sometimes of chasing the dragon. And that's my own internal fight between what is new and strange versus what it's like having someone who's around because I've had both. And Thor's got a lot that addresses both of those areas. And I was just like, oh, wow. You know, he's he's not just slapping some shit together and ripping some shit off the internet and repackaging it as his own. He The man has done his homework. He knows what he's talking about. So, guys, it's worth looking into. Okay. Rob, I really appreciate that. And you brought up a good point. I want the guys to know out there. It's definitely not a grift. I don't do this for a living. You don't do this for a living. Not at all. I get a, I get a lot of satisfaction in the philosophy that, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. I am privy to this knowledge. And I'm also not so egotistical to think that I am not standing on the shoulders of giants and expressing it to you guys. I want to make it very personal. And the reason that the, that the course costs what it does is I have to cover the cost essentially of the internet you know, obviously the broadcast system, the printing, the putting together the videos and all of that stuff. That's the reason it costs. And also because nothing, nothing of value is just straight free. You don't take it for what it is unless there's some value attached to it. And, and I and agree. really, that's what you need. 
Yep. And mm-hmm. I agree with you hundred percent on that, that if, if there's, if it's free in that sense, then nobody cares. That's like, ah, oh, it's free. Who fucking cares? And I, and I've encountered that in all aspects of life, you know, never mind the amount of time and energy and, uh, the, the overhead that goes into what you're doing. Yeah. It's the fact that, well, if you give it away, nobody fucking cares. Right. Where if, if you charge something for it, then people tend to sit up and pay attention. Yeah. to it. So I agree with you hundred percent. So his asking price guys, it's not unreasonable. I'll say no. it right now. It's not unreasonable. At all. He could probably charge three times and it would be reasonable. It's like, 